Hey guys, if you're tired of keeping up with all the changes in Microsoft 365, stay tuned because each month I spend hours sifting through the 100 or so announcements from Microsoft to bring you guys the highlight reel of all the changes, updates, and enhancements that you don't want to miss. This is purpose built for IT admins and MSPs looking to deliver these messages back down to their customers. And let's go ahead and dive in with this latest month in July, starting off with Microsoft Teams. Okay guys, so before we dive in here, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post in the video description, so be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Getting into it here, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first one is related to Toast notification from Teams and users having capability in the settings to make that more compact especially if they're getting multiple Teams notifications. You can see that here in the screenshot. Timelines on this one's mid-July and be complete by late July. This next one here is giving users the ability to save chats and channel messages for later. You can see here in the screenshot a user going and doing that and then being able to access it from the quick views. This timeline is August 2025 and be complete by early September. Next one here is this meeting join bar. This is a little bit intrusive in my opinion for any user that has accepted a meeting or uh, accepted it as tentative. As an example, they'll get this banner appearing when the meeting starts to go ahead and join versus that sidebar toast notification. Timelines on this one's mid-July and late July. As a user, you can change the settings and turn this off. Next one here is more of a security feature, but Microsoft is going to start validating Teams meeting join URLs. And where this could break down is if you have a third-party security tool, such as an email tool that rewrites URLs, and it could produce a way that makes them unusable or flagged even as malicious on the Microsoft side so they don't open. So you might actually get a help desk ticket that says, hey, I can't open my meeting. I do have from Microsoft some targeted recommendations on reviewing this with your security tool to make sure that this doesn't happen. You have up until the September 30th timeframe for when this is gonna start occurring. Speaking of updates, guys, if you're still using manual workflows and scripts to manage Microsoft 365 security across clients, you should check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule that replaces hours of grunt work with a full security assessment in under 60 seconds. There's no complicated setup, no coding, and it's how MSPs are uncovering security gaps, closing new clients faster, and turning security into a recurring revenue engine. All you need to do to run a scan is enter in a domain name for a client, Click on Start Assessment, consent to the read permissions we have for the application, and watch the data pour in. In less than a minute, you get a full executive summary of the risk within the tenant, all mapped to Secure Score and frameworks like CIS and NIST. Additionally, white label client facing reporting is available for you to share instantly to start having better security conversations with your customers about their risk. Our top customers are leveraging this assessment to upsell their clients into projects and ongoing services. So if this looks interesting, guys, and you want to run a free scan on a tenant today, head over to cloudcapsule.io where you'll be able to sign up for a free assessment. Next one here is for this new Workflows experience. Workflows as an app has been around actually for some time. It's given a new facelift effectively here. But this tool gives you some micro workflow automation using Power Automate on the back end. And it has a whole library of automations that users can take part of. You just need a Teams license as part of this and a Power Automate license, which comes with your base plans. Um, but users could use this to create workflow automations in different ways. Timelines on this one is September 2025. This next one here is related to an existing feature with SMS support in Teams Premium, just expanding that capability into the Australian market. Something as you can see in this screenshot here, you can integrate with um, other apps like Microsoft Bookings or the virtual appointment in Teams. And this allows you to also send out text messages as part of that experience to the end users. Timelines on this one is gonna be late July and be complete by early August. Last one for Teams here is just a cosmetic update and something that users could get excited about if they're tired of looking at that pale purple color within Teams. This is giving users the ability to go ahead and choose an accent color, as you can see here, if you want bright pink, that's uh, something that's gonna be available for you here. This will happen late July and be complete by late August. Shifting into Outlook here, we have a couple of first announcements related to mobile with iOS and Android. This first one is related to giving users a warning message for a large number of recipients if they're sending that out just to say, hey, you probably wanna review this for the messaging. You may not have known that you're sending it to this many people. Timelines on this one's early May, be complete by early July. So likely already in market by the time you're watching this. 
And then the other one here is extending an existing functionality we do have in the web and desktop application today where you have you know, external sender warnings if you've set that up or activated that within Microsoft 365 to help users identify messages from unverified senders, as an example. Um, and this timeline here for this one is mid-July and be complete by mid-August. Last one here for Microsoft Outlook is also giving users the ability to report junk and block or unsubscribe in one action. So just kind of saving you some time here on having to do both. Also allowing them to clean up their inbox a little bit faster from a bunch of spam potentially that they're getting from unwanted messages. Timelines on this one's gonna be mid-July and be complete by late July. Next one here I'm kind of excited about as well here too, just as an admin, honestly, who's managed this for users in the past, but Microsoft changing the uh, backup and restore experience for Microsoft Authenticator on iOS. Previously, users would have to set up a personal Microsoft account, which would cause a lot of friction, but also they wouldn't remember the password for that account, you know, when they lost their phone or they got a new phone and tried to set up Microsoft Authenticator again. So it causes a lot of friction from a support burden perspective. But this is basically saying that users will be able to use their iCloud, their existing iCloud, iCloud keychain account, and um, you know, not have to do that for the account names and third-party TOTP credentials. So this will happen in September of 2025. Moving into Microsoft Intune here, a decent amount of updates for Microsoft Intune. The first one's related to hot patching capabilities being extended into the ARM architecture. Copilot PCs is another way to say that. That's a little bit more human readable, if you will. But this is something that I've been talking about the past few months because it is now available with even plans like Business Premium, but it allows these devices now to update without restarts. Um, that's GA today. And then the next one here is extending the lapse capabilities into Mac OS. So this is the local admin password solution and being able to rotate credentials and manage a local admin on that account remotely from Intune. Uh, this is something only available on Mac OS for automated device enrollment for new machines, not existing, you may get into that, but Microsoft's continuing to invest in Mac management. Speaking of which, they are also giving you more reporting around real-time visibility into Apple device updates. You can remotely manage the software updates today, but the visibility on you know any troubleshooting that had to go on or where those devices were at in those updates was often very hard. So this is giving you more granular reporting um, within Intune Admin Center. This is GA today. And then the last two here, the first one's related to wildcard support for Microsoft Intune Endpoint Privilege Management. This is Microsoft's elevation control solution. That's an add-on license than your typical base plans, but it does allow you to basically have a wildcard to match dynamic file names or version patterns. Uh, versus thinking about having to set up new rules and exclusions every time there's a new update to an application for third-party patching uh, for users. So a much more streamlined way to automate the updates for those applications. Last one here is also related to extending capabilities for device cleanup rules for different platforms. Previously, you would have one global policy for device cleanup rules that said, hey, if a device hasn't checked in in 30 days, we wanna wipe it out of our inventory to keep your inventory clean. This is giving you more granular capabilities to define that on a per platform basis. You can change that up between Windows, um, iOS, iPad, Mac OS, and Android devices. Shifting into Microsoft Entry here, this first one's related to an announcement, security uplift here for linkable token identifiers. This is more technical, so I'm not gonna go into the weeds, but effectively, when some user was compromised in the past, it was harder to go and investigate, potentially, when a session token was stolen, what all the attacker did you know, with that session because of the logging information within Intra. Now, with linkable token identifiers, it's all under something that you can search for under the same session ID, and so you can better investigate and more quickly investigate what attackers are doing you know, post-breach to solve for compromise and the mitigation tactics. The other cool win here from a security perspective in Microsoft Entry was that Microsoft opened up token protection capabilities that are in conditional access policies into P1 licensing versus just being in Entra P2 licensing. 
So great security win. I think this is still in preview and there's still a lot that needs to be improved upon with this protection, but it's a great first step here for people that have licensing like business premium as an example. Next one here is also based off of an attack chain called mail bombing. This is effectively where a attacker will flood a user's inbox by either you know sending them a lot of mail or subscribing them to a lot of legitimate mail services that often floods their inbox and then they'll call the user impersonating a help desk and get them to install remote connection software on their device and compromise that user or that device. So it's a pretty sophisticated attack chain, but Microsoft is now including protections, reporting, and hunting capabilities for this within Defender, um, specifically Defender for Office 365. This is GA today, so I'll link some documentation so you guys can see more about this, especially if you've seen clients that have experienced this in the past. Shifting into Copilot here, this first one's related to general availability of the conditional access optimization agent and security Copilot within Microsoft Entra. The conditional access optimization agent is going to basically get a review your conditional access policies and recommend updates based off of changes, unwarranted exclusions, and things like that. So it's using a lot of intelligence to do that. And then Security Copilot in Microsoft Intra is also leveraging more of a natural language interface with users to do things like investigate risky users, see where they were signing in from without having to look at the sign-in logs, detect things that you would normally be searching throughout the UI and spending a lot more time than that. The only asterisk here is that Security Copilot is a different licensing model, highly confusing and also based off of a credit-based system I'll link information about the pricing in my uh, blog post, but definitely out of reach for most of us in SMB, I would say today. Next one here is also related to Security Copilot and Intune being generally available. This is also using natural language for you to go explore and interact with data, as you're seeing here in this visual tutorial, where users actually searching um, based off of this experience of selecting and using the natural language here to pull back data from across their tenant. And that's like giving you the ability to filter down really quickly and not have to, again, traverse the different tabs within the admin experience. This GA today also requires that security copilot licensing. Next one here is copilot notebooks in OneNote. I think this is going to be really popular for users out there that use OneNote a lot. OneNote hasn't really progressed, honestly, as a piece of software in a very long time. So this is a good new facelift for it. It's a really great use case, I think gives you a lot of capabilities of creating these notebooks, but the biggest benefit I think is using the capabilities of search to be able to search through you know, the entire notebook and surface information across documents that you've linked within there, as well as obviously all the note taking you may have done over time. You can also get an audio overview, much like you were listening to a podcast. Um, as an example, this is GA today as well too, if you have a Copilot a license for Microsoft 365. Next one here is also expanding off of the existing features for the intelligent meeting recap in a Teams meeting where they'll give you the AI summarization and they're bolting on these visual cues if anybody was sharing their screen um, at that point in time, as you can see in the screenshot to help tie back to the meeting note as well as the visual for remembering that and just putting the pieces together a little bit cleaner. I think it's a great enhancement to what was already existing as will happen mid-September and be complete by late September. Next one here is related to Microsoft giving more admin functionality to control how much they're punching you in the face with Copilot branding. And this specifically is for Microsoft Edge uh, for business and the Copilot icon by default is always going to be in that upper, upper right corner. This is giving you a setting that you can now disable that, remove that uh, for your users if you don't want them to touch it or they're asking you questions about it. As an example, link in my blog, you know, how you can go do that. But the timelines in this one is August of 2025. And then the very last one here for Copilot is this new researcher agent available in Word. This is effectively using OpenAI's deep research model with Copilot orchestration and search to go ahead and interface with the user where you're in the context of likely needing to do deep research for the document that you're creating. Timelines on this one's August 18th and be complete by September 1st. Okay, guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any of the features you're most excited about. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already to get these update videos each month. And be sure to run a free security scan of your tenant leveraging Cloud Capsule with the link in the video description. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week.